Hi there, Malcolm here with my 88th booktube video and today I'll be bringing you February's wrap up. I managed the grand total of three whole books, so let's get cracking. First book I finished was Star Wars X-Wing Rogue Squadron in the Empire's Service, a story by Michael Stackpole. In this one, his own Izard of the Imperial Security Bureau is playing off the various Imperial remnants of each other. And one of the pawns she's using is Baron Suntir Fell, a man who trained alongside a lot of the rebel pilots, including Han Solo, but for whatever reason didn't quite twig that the Empire is bad. He's also one hell of a pilot and a formidable foe against Rogue Squadron. However, most of the story is caught up in some byplays, subterfuge. Suntir Fell is sent to a planet to check out the local governor, who's suspected of being corrupt. And in the way of these stories, the Imperial agent sent to check stuff out find themselves in hot water from the very people they're checking out. I did enjoy the story, there was an awful lot going on in it, and I can say a month later I really don't remember most of it. The artwork was okay, I think some of the faces look a bit weird, but you can still vaguely tell who was who. There's a big twist at the end, but having read a lot of the X-Wing novels, I already know about the twist, and so it was not much of a surprise when it was revealed. I won't spoil it for those who don't know. Worth reading. And then I finished, the following Star Wars X-Wing Rogue Squadron book, Blood and Honor, the story also by Michael A. Stackpole. In this one, Baron Suntifel has been captured by the Alliance, and the first half of the book is more of his debriefing, as he recounts his life, explaining how he got to be where he was. So cue a nice flashback, a few cameos from some known faces, as he spins the stuff, as he tells his tale, turning a feared Imperial fighter into somebody you can really emphasize with. I really enjoyed how it was told, and it's also nice seeing a character get some decent backstory. And the artwork was pretty good. I did enjoy the artwork for this half. Unfortunately, this artwork stops abruptly as it goes from one page into the next story with a very different artwork, which is much more cartoony. Uh, it's a shame they had both stories on the same double page spread because the difference is really noticeable. In this story, Fel and the Rebels go to do a mission on a planet. I won't tell you too much because there are lots of spoilers in there, but it does introduce the character of Corrin Horn, for those who are familiar with the X-Wing novels, who at the time is part of security, but we end up joining the Rogue Squadron team and then going on to becoming a Jedi. And this is his first appearance. The story was okay, it was a bit convoluted, and I must confess I did actually forget what they were trying to do. But it was fine. I'd say this is worth buying. The next up was my book of the month, Revelation Space by Alistair Reynolds. At 567 pages, I wouldn't say this was overly big. However, the text is quite dense, and I must have been tired or something, because it literally took me all month to read it. Ordinarily, I would do a separate video for a book of the month book, but seeing so far in this video, this is the only non-graphic novel novel I'm holding. This is it. Previously, I've read a few other books from the Revelation Space series. I've read the two Prefect Dreyfus Emergency books, which are sort of prequel spin-offs to this, set quite a few years before. And I've also read a short story collection, Beyond the Aquila Rift, which features some stories from this universe from all over. This book starts off with an archaeological dig on an alien planet, trying to investigate just what happened to the natives of a planet that aren't there anymore. Because he fears what happened to the aliens could happen to the humans. However, just as he's about to get somewhere with that, he's then captured, and a whole bunch of different things happen. Now, I really enjoyed this one, but I would say it did take an awful long time for anything to actually start happening as it were you know because i read i read the blurb on the back telling me roughly what it was about we started off with the relevant archaeological dig and then we go on this massive tangent most of which arguably could be cut from the book and it wouldn't actually change the plot at all no i'm not bitter because it took me all month to read it you know i did enjoy reading what happened to him on these adventures but plot wise i would say the majority of it is unnecessary however by about halfway into the book or halfway out of the book things started happening destinations started getting arrived to and, and questions started getting answered and the various revelationary twists and revelationary things were all very revelationary but in space hence the title the main character dan sylvest was an interesting one a man who through some previous accident had lost his eyesight and has a pair of bionic eyes instead and ones that could look in various different wavelengths which is pretty cool he's a bit relentless at finding out the truth behind what happened to the aliens which did make him a bit of an ass however we do find out just why he's why he is it doesn't excuse his behavior but it does explain it and the ending was very 2001 a space odyssey type of ending now one, some could say that's a bit of a spoiler but if you don't like the ending to 2001 a space odyssey there's a good chance you won't like the ending to this one. However, if you did like the ending of 2001 A Space Odyssey, or you don't mind it, then the ending here shouldn't bother you too much. And certainly when you've got to slog through 560 pages, 
to get an ending like that, I think people should be clear as to what they're getting into before they commit themselves to that size book. I thought it was alright as an ending, um, certainly I couldn't see where else it could have gone, but I must admit, when I was reading it, I was thinking, oh, a 2001 ending. The other thing that really got me about this book is this is the first of the Revelation Space series, which is why it's all named after the book, I presume. And the world, or worlds, is fully established in here. Now, as I said, I've read other books from the series, or rather based around the series, and they refer to the various factions and planets and systems and habitations and things within the universe, which I found helped because these things were very much in this book, but with no explanation as to what they were or how they fitted in with everything else. You know, there's one character say, oh, look, there's an ultra, or this is ultra technology, without any explanation as to what an ultra is. There are references to the Glitter Band, which is where the two Prefect Dreyfus books are set, but I only know what the Glitter Band is because I'd read those two books, otherwise it'll just be a word which means nothing to me. But I was really impressed with how much of the universe was built into this book, because there have been other series by other authors which have been problematic because the first book sets up something, and the second book introduces a new thing which theoretically should have been in the first book and by the time you get to book 10 where this 10th new thing is introduced you're thinking well the first book's completely irrelevant now because none of what's happening sh couldn't have happened back then but of course the author hadn't invented it back then here it's all been invented so really impressed with that yes it was a slog but a really enjoyable slog buy it and there we go three books not my worst score for february i have only managed one book before now have you read any large tomes that you really fought to get through but found actually quite satisfying by the time you got to the end of it or have they been a complete letdown so answers below but as usual if you have nothing nice to say then please keep it to yourself thank you and until next time see you later hi there malcolm here with my 88th booktube video and today i'll be bringing you that bloody word february Dang. <laughs> February. February. No, February. February. <laughs> Hi there, Malcolm here with my 88th booktube video, and today I'll be bringing you February's TBR. No, I'm not, it's a wrap up. Bugger! <laughs> Don't laugh again, it's not fair. <laughs> right, go for it, go. Oh. <clears throat> it's a wrap up, not TBR. Get it in your head. Hi there, Malcolm here with my, um, something. What? <laughs> Hi there, Malcolm here with my 88th booktube video. Stop it if <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hi there, Malcolm here with my 88th, um, focus. <laughs> God, why is this so difficult? Well,